Hey everybody, uh, in this last part to this Maya to Unreal Environment tutorial series, we're going to talk about how to uh, finalize our scene um, for uh, lighting. Uh, and then um, if you have imported everything as individual pieces like I have over here, we'll talk about how to snap things together, duplicate them around to rebuild your environment. Uh, but this version over here is one static mesh that we have imported in that has all these different materials applied to it. So either way, you can display your scene uh, as one mesh. It's a little bit more difficult to adjust things manually, or you can import them as pieces, as a modular Lego-like fashion, uh, and then re build, rebuild your environment through Unreal's uh, tools and copying and pasting your uh, environment pieces. One thing I wanted to show here, go back to my meshes folder, is my updated uh, collisions. Okay, so in a previous video, I talked about, if I turn on my simple collisions again, collisions, simple collision. Uh, I talked about creating basic collisions, these green bounding boxes. Okay. Uh, I've created some simple ones to prevent the player from going into some of the areas that I don't want them to. Um, and I've done it primarily with cubes. So a bunch of these forms are more cubic shapes. So there's one that prevents the character from going into those rails. There's one preventing the character from going into the trash bags. There's one for the overall building. There's one for the sidewalk right there. Uh, whoops, it's a little large, so we can um, scale it in a little. Move it over some, I guess we'll update that. So the same way I would move and rotate an object. There you go. Uh, and then one for the street as well. So those are all cubic shapes. Uh, for these poles, I can create just a small cubic form, but instead what I did is I created a capsule. So I've got a collision, add capsule simplified. Uh, a capsule is more of a cylindrical type form that you can manipulate. So that's what I did with uh, these light posts. Is I created a simple capsule uh, to make the player collide with that as well. Um, so that way when I go play, it'll step up properly. I can't go through the building. I can't go through the uh, poles. I come back to the back side here. I can't go to the trash can or those bags. I can't roll through there. Uh, the collision will block me from going into that area. Um, so collisions are really helpful, but we can set up some simple collisions within the static mesh editor. Uh, if I turn on simple collision to create some simple blocking actions if you want the player to not walk through a surface. Um, the individual objects will have their own individual collisions. You probably should not have to manage too much. All right, so last video we talked about how to set up the textures and get all those running properly. Um, I wanted to review the collision section of my updated collisions. The last thing I want to talk about is lighting. So I have some custom lights for my light poles, uh, and I'll come back and recreate those. So let's, uh, let's just delete these out. These are simple spotlights. And I want to go find my directional light because yours is probably going to say it's static or stationary, uh, which means the light is not going to change. So it'll also mean it'll come up the red bar that says lighting needs to be rebuilt on however many objects. Um, so I have uh, two different ways that we're displaying. If you have imported everything as individual pieces, uh, such as these four here, and are going to be rebuilding your environment from Lego-like pieces that you duplicate around the scene, uh, then we can keep with static lighting. Uh, but uh, if I have combined everything together in Maya and imported it in as one combined mesh, uh, I cannot keep static or stationary type of lights. Uh, as in, if it's a light is static or stationary, it's going to bake the lights onto what's called light maps, which is a secondary UV map for each object. Um, so that saves the amount of rendering that the engine has to do by baking any light that doesn't change the lighting on a particular object. When I have a one static mesh combined object that has a lot of duplicated forms, I can't have static or stationary lighting. So a simple way to fix this is just to change the light to what's called a dynamic light. It's more process intensive, but for our scene here, it can work for what our need is. So to change our light to a dynamic light, in uh, the, the details panel, here's my light source. It says light source this is a directional light. So find wherever this icon is. Um, and we're going to change the mobility to movable. So once I change this to movable, 
the lighting needs to be rebuilt if command goes away. And for our purpose, for just displaying an environment, that'll work really well for us. We don't need to bake lights down. Um, so that way we don't have to rebuild the lighting. If it goes to static or stationary, it's going to require you to build your lighting again. But if you change it to movable, uh, it won't have a need to rebuild the lighting. If I get my rotate tool with my light source, I can rotate this light and you can see the light shadows will change. So you can change the angle of them. I kind of want that storefront, the pizza storefront, to be in light. So my shadows are going to be this back side of the building. So, but if you get the light source and rotate it, you can change the light angle. Okay, so something like that. Right. You can also change the intensity of that light. So if you increase that intensity too much, it's going to blow the lighting out. Um, 2.5 lux is what it is as default. You can also change the light color as well. This is reminiscent of uh, sunlight. So if I look at it, there's my sun and then the sky. And if you look at the background, the clouds are moving slightly. So I'm not going to change the brightness too much because it is going to change the way the exterior lighting of the sky dome is going to look. But you can change the light angle uh, to represent whatever angle you might want there. Um, so that's the default light source, directional light. You might also want to add custom lights to your scene as well. So I'm going to come over here to my modes panel and go to lights. And then I'm going to drag in a spotlight because these individual lamp posts would have more of a spotlight. There's also a point, another directional, rect, and skylight. We're going to do a spotlight here. So if I drag in a spotlight, uh, we'll move it to like right here in front of this light. Zoom in on it a little bit. You can see that it is producing light on the ground there. If I drag this up, it's going to affect a larger area, but it's going to be more dim the further away it is from that ground surface. So I'm going to position this up here uh, underneath the light, but not clipping it. So we'll kind of move it right there. That'll work for now. Uh, and I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to change the light intensity and light color. Let's go ahead and change the light color. So I want this to be more of a yellow light. So we'll drag up yellow, something like that. Maybe we'll dial that back a little bit more later. And then my intensity, I'm going to drag my intensity up until I can see it. So I don't want that to be too crazy, but let's drag that up to, I don't know, 80 or something so I can see it affecting my environment. So if I come back and move that around, you can see that light is affecting the ground underneath it. Okay. So you can change the intensity and light color. Uh, the light needs to be rebuilt comes back on. So let's just change the mobility to movable so we don't have to worry about that. And then now I can duplicate this light over. So if I hold down the Alt key with the Move tool, hit W to get moved, Alt, hold down Alt and drag a copy over. That will drag a copy of this light over so that way I can have multiple lights in my scene. Let's do it again. Alt and drag over here. Pretty good. And let's do it a couple more times for my ones around the side over here. Good. Let's move it out some. Move it over. Yeah, it's okay right there. And let's hold down Alt and drag another copy over here. So this light is a little bit higher. So I'll move it up. Here you go. So now we have some custom lights in here as well. These yellow lights are custom lights uh, that also are casting their own shadows, if you can see that there. So there's a shadow from this light above me. A couple of shadows here. So that's a way we can add custom lighting and then changing lights to movable so we don't have to rebuild the lighting. Now movable lights are going to take longer to render, but uh, or can be animated and don't have to build the lighting. So let's play our uh, level here. Uh, we can see the light is affecting the player character as well. Another advantage for dynamic lights also. Okay, uh, so that way we can see our scene. All right, the last thing I wanted to talk about is if you have your individual parts, how to build your environment uh, based off of your individual parts. All right, so let's start with uh, like our street piece here. And it is important to turn on snapping. And our snapping is on by default, but just to change how much it's snapping back and forth. We'll try the 10 for right now. So it's a snap to every 10 units. So let's uh, hold down Alt and drag out a copy of this uh, street here. Uh, F the zoom. I'm going to snap this down. So you know, it's good right there. Uh, snap the 10 units down. 
And then now, um, if I hold down Alt again and drag another copy and move it over, that should snap to the same coordinates as my uh, object. So you have to change uh, from 10 to 5 or 50 depending on uh, your object. Uh, but if I hold down Alt and drag, that's an easy way to make copies and snap them in a modular standpoint like a more like a level design position would do. Um, so as long as your pivot points are relatively in the same position for everything, your entire world can be snapped together. So I can say uh, there is my uh, sidewalk. So let's snap it down more. There you go. So my sidewalk's there. And I can hold down Alt, make a copy of it. That should snap the same way my street is. So basically, you need to work on the grid. Um, snap to the grid. Make sure your pivot points work with the grid. Here's a wall piece uh, that I could pull in to make a copy. Put it over here. There you go. So that one snaps to the right section there. Do that. Move it up one. There you go. So there's some wall sections. Make sure everything snaps how we want to there. I'm going to make a, a gap so that I can put uh, like a doorway in here. So we can make that selection, uh, duplicate it up. Everything should snap. Uh, I think these might need to be on like fives. Yep, so let's pull the snap down to five. There you go, so that snaps properly. Uh, so here is my wall window. Uh, which we'll treat it like a door for right now. Move it back. And so that way we're going to snap everything to uh, our window setup that we have here. So that should be perfect there. Here we go. So that's a brief example of how you can import in individual parts and then rebuild that environment from duplicating your individual pieces. Uh, just another way that we can import into Unreal. Now this way of individual parts is more of a level design way, so it's more efficient for a design standpoint. It's more efficient if you need to bake static lighting down. If you combine everything together, it's not going to allow you to bake the static lighting down properly on most occasions. Uh, but this method is going to allow you to bake the lighting for these objects because it's individually duplicated in Unreal instead of copied in a program outside of Unreal. All right, so that wraps up this tutorial series on how to import uh, models from Maya and textures from Maya into Unreal and to display uh, detailed and natural lighting within Unreal.